going on everybody and welcome back to the channel now today hey we are back here with a reaction to the great man himself cricket raz he's got a new upload when icc and bcci went to war that's never good when those two go to war um the politics the scandal the controversy that shaped cricket drs so i think i know where this is going here hey firstly if you are new around here hit that subscribe button leave a like and of course original link to this video is in the description so go show the original video some love if you haven't got nothing else to say let's just get into it oh hold on there's play hold on what the June of 2011. 2011? In June. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Between the BCCI and the ICC. Mm. However, what both the parties had not realized yet was that soon one variable was going to become the deciding factor in this world. One variable that either of them had no control over. One variable <laughs> that began with the wrong replay. I mean, his foot's behind the line. Much. So, was his foot behind the line or was he spikes above it? I don't know. After the wow. first India West Indies test match, a match that had been fought to the nail, they finally India had come up on top. But that wasn't the main focus in the post match conference. Everybody instead was more interested in the spat between Captain Dhoni and umpire Daryl Harper. Mm. Throughout this match, the Indian team had been oh, that's a good ball. agitated over the umpire's decisions. That was a good a ball! Oh, that was not given out! Goodness me! I would have been Darryl pissed off. Throughout the <laughs> Yo, who is bowling? Is it is it a Shishnira? I have no idea. I'm just because they're a left-hander. Oh lord. Oh lord, that is pitching middle stump and that is taking out all of his leg stump. And middle. Had been visibly agitated over the umpire's decision. That's not good. A senior player would actually come and tell the media at a point, we don't want him. And you can quote this as a reaction of the entire Indian team. And then, as if putting oil in the fire, umpire Daryl would ban the debutant Praveen Kumar from the rest of the match. What? Causing an agitated Dhoni to argue with him right there in the middle of the match. And hence, he would then go on to say in the post match conference, I can only say the correct decisions were made, and you know, they should have, the game would have finished much earlier and would have been in the hotel by now. No, by itself, this one. Sounded like that man Dhoni had some, you know, some dinner waiting for him back at the hotel and he needed to go get it. Yeah, really Players Come on, being Darryl. discontent with the umpires isn't a rare occurrence by any measure of the yardstick. And even somebody speaking out like this would at most get their fees off. Hence, it was a complete shock when it was announced that umpire Harper had refused to officiate in the remaining two tests, huh. choosing to take his retirement early. As you can guess, the furor that followed the declaration was a sight to see, leading mm. many to speculate how ICC would respond to this entire fiasco. But then another shock. They refused to say a word. Such was the silence from the ICC that umpire Harper would actually place the blame for his retirement on them, on their failure to take action against Roni, hmm. on their failure to support him. But for the umpire. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to the umpire here, but look, there was no way the ICC is going to go at Dhoni, because if they started something with Dhoni and, like, banned him for a test match or two, I mean, that, that would have started an even bigger war. So I think they know. Just to, to leave Dhoni alone. <laughs> leave Dhoni there. Seen as a personal insult, most of the media and cricketing boards around the world knew exactly what was happening. The ICC had refused to say anything because they couldn't afford to. After all, all of their attention was focused on fighting the bigger war. A war for TRS with the BCCI. Now, ICC and BCCI had been fuming over this issue for upwards of two years by this point. BCCI going from volunteering to be the first to try out the system, <laughs> now opposing it no matter the cost. Yeah. From the lack of accuracy of ball tracking to how costly all the equipment was, both the cricketing giants had locked horn over this time and again in the last few years. But now, with the ICC succeeding in convincing all the dissenting boards, all of them had slowly started using their DRS. A bit all of them, except India. 
India had now become the sole hope of all the cricketing traditionalists and many around the world putting their political weight behind the chart. But with the ICC cricketing committee unanimously recommending the use of VRS, not just in tests but in ODIs and T20 too. This upcoming annual meeting in Hong Kong was sure to be a flash point. The entire world seemingly ganging up on BCCI while the BCCI pushed back by saying we will oppose it no matter what. So basically, battle lines had been drawn. Both parties now ready to go to war. Hence nobody was going to antagonize the other over the issue of an umpire spat. In its place, the lack of accuracy of umpiring was used by the media. So that was there. That was a good ball. Moving the discussion from the media directly into the boardrooms in a two-day-long political tug of war. Through double speak, that only politicians can understand, and negotiations that would make an onion cry. An so onion cry. Made that sound clear. Yeah. ICC wanted some sort of a breakthrough. While India, they would not move on the inaccuracy of the ball tracking. I think that's it. In other words, everything else was negotiable. It was a thing. Everybody knew by this point. DRS was the future. As many sports around the world had already done, yeah. technology had to be introduced in the game. The question was how, and hence came the compromise. Gosh, shot! BCCI Get that out of here. The mandatory use of DRS in all international matches, mm. but without the use of Hawkeye ball tracker. While ICC <laughs> would convert the issue of ball tracking into a bilateral one, to yeah. be managed by the individual boards involved. Now this compromise uh, wasn't going to be an easy sell. On either side, the ICC now had to convince all the individual boards uh, why India was getting special treatment. While BCCI now had to convince scores of cricket traditionalists on why they had suddenly changed their stance. So both the boards would suddenly find themselves under a lot of pressure. The compromise receiving heavy flak from both the sides of the aisle. Many predicted that the pressure would prove too much. That soon one side would give. And things might have gone to that point too, if not for the very able, the second test of that India West Indies test series. Fidel Edwards' last ball and Dhoni at the crease. A routine ball that stops a bit, Dhoni goes after it hard, miscues, and a catch. Oh. Dhoni turns and starts walking back towards the pavilion when a par gold asks him to stay. The third umpire is sitting on a ball, but the result oh. is as conclusive as the cup. Edwards is in. Dhoni is out, and India is soon to collapse for the swan and one runs. Damn! All in all, just another day at the office, till a report came out. That replay on which Dhoni had been given out, that was of a previous ball. That ball in question. What? How was that possible? <laughs> Yo, who was in the DRS team? Was a suspected a no ball. Now in isolation, this could be written off as just another gaffe, but the timing of this was such. Smack dab in the middle of a contentious DRS debate. Yikes! That this fault in technology. Yo, and I'm not gonna lie, if I was the BCCI after that, then I would have said, nah, the DRS can get fucked now. <laughs> Imagine getting done dirty like that. Your captain Dhoni goes out like that. Oh it no! Full blown controversy. <sighs> Both sides desperately wanting to use this to prove their point. Mm. The ICC having to make the first defense, stating that the third umpire was not at fault. He didn't choose the replays. He just reacted to them. So the umpire and by extension the ICC had nothing to do with. Whose fault is it? So then who chose the clips? Well, that was the job of the back end broadcasting team. Oh brother! During the match, and hence the actual broadcasting company. Would have to come out and explain the situation. A story going something like this: Broadcasters around the world use a system called the EVS for their video feeds. Okay. EVS, that's Ecrature Video Simulation. It's Fox. A system used for creation, editing, exchange, and playout of all audio video feeds. Okay. The same video feeds that are relayed in real time in your houses. Okay. And used by the umpires for their reviews. Because of the quick response time required, under tremendous amount of pressure, it needs to be handled with experienced hands. In this case, though, the senior analyst in charge had to take a sudden leave of absence, leaving a rookie in his place. A rookie who had then messed up. And though the match referee broad tried to write it off by saying, "It was an honest mistake. We have to now put it behind us and move on." How could anyone lose such a tantalizing morsel? So the anti-DRS faction quickly attacked. That why was that rookie? Still doing their job. 
Well, it is a job that requires specific expertise. Sure. An area where replacement is not that easily found. That's a good point. So then, uh, what's to say that such a mistake won't happen again? More importantly, now with cricket being played around the world under the management of different broadcasting companies, yeah. what's to say that all of them will have the same level of competence? So aren't you just taking out the umpire's human error and replacing it with the technicians, exchanging the so-called uh. umpire's imagination with an analyst's? Now, none of these objections were wrong or new for that matter. It had always been a point of contention that ICC couldn't take out the human error part in what was supposed to be a foolproof system. But now, everybody was quick mm. to pile on this weakness, seemingly wanting to use this to take back the compromise. <laughs> but that was when they were hit by a blinder. ICC, who had mostly remained silent on this topic till now, letting the match officials on ground handle the mess, they quickly released a statement. If this series had the decision review system, an ICC official would have been present to monitor the broadcast. Yes, long before this series took place, a DRS rule had been made that one ICC official had to be present whose sole job, whose only job was to monitor the video feed. Hmm. And by choosing not to use the full measure of the DRS, they had in effect overruled the safeguard, hmm. meaning the human error that had seeped through. That was not because of the system, but by the lack of it. Hmm. And this counter punch seemed to have done the trick. Clean punch at the heart of the matter had seemed to pull the wind right out of the open sails. The discontent on the Indian side coming down a bit finally giving both the boards some room to breathe. And though the opposition would be back soon, this calm would just be enough mm. to allow the England tour to go through. The England tour where for the first time India would play a bilateral tour under mandatory DRS. And that proved to be the first brick. The first brick to fall in a long standing wall. Oh, no. By no means was it smooth sailing after this. Hold on. Should we raid all these? Hold on. Be okay. 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 I don't know. Okay. Just seems like... Okay. The Moving pendulum on. would swing back and forth many times over the next few years. Both the ICC and the BCC are shifting their positions back and forth. But this series would become the first step to increase the support for DRS among Indian fans. Support that would slowly and gradually grow to the point that by this year, that is 2023, BCC would allow the full version of DRS to be used, even in Ranji Trophy matches. Is it really? An end to issue. Damn, Damn wait, so they get DRS in Ranji Trophy? Damn, we don't even get DRS in the bloody Sheffield Shield? Come on! We gotta up our game. World cricket. What's going on? Finally, decade and a half. Review today has become as much as a part of cricket. Send that upstairs, thank you. Places. Everybody hates it when it goes against us. <laughs> Nobody knows what yeah. it will do the next moment. But in the end, mostly everybody agrees. It makes cricket better. So this yeah. was the story of the replay. A replay Ooh, of I mean, shit, that looks like a you know, fair, fair, fair delivery of that. Of that was the wrong one. But which in the end became pivotal in giving the world DRS. Yeah. Thank you for watching this video Aye. i hope you enjoyed it and i genuinely hope you have a good day hey you have a good day too he always ends off the videos like that it warms my heart but hey we are gonna cap that one off let me know what you guys are thinking of course drs you know i remember i remember that as a you know as a kid growing up and like when the drs just started to kind of come through and we used to play series against india and then there was never like the full drs and it used to confuse me as a kid why but here you go about 10 years later i now find out but hey that will cap us off of course shout out to the man cricket raz i hope we all enjoyed and i'll see everyone in the next one